Sometimes freedom is scary looking. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning in solution stories. This is episode 76. If you are keeping score, we've got that story about scary looking freedom plus a landmark biometrics ruling. But first, right here in New Hexaco, as we like to call it, New Hexaco looks to legalize it. First of two bits from the local Santa Fe reporter, adult use cannabis bill coming in days. I don't know if we've actually seen it yet. This dates back to January 17th. Representative Javier Martinez, Senator Jerry Ortiz y Pino told the plan to introduce two separate bills legalizing cannabis use, possession, and purchase for adults 21 and over. Oh, Fritz. Franco's about to climb into the frame, actually. She's always hanging out. Yeah, please enjoy cat butt. <laughs> Should make you pay extra for that. She's always hanging out on the mixer. Um, what was I talking about, dude? Uh, use, possession, purchase for adults 21 or over. Another bill, state bill, would remove tax on medical cannabis, which is pretty much the right thing to do. I've maybe often noted, not perhaps while recording, that up in Oregon, even when recreational cannabis became legal, medical was still where it was at. You got the higher potency stuff and you didn't have to pay the exorbitant taxes. So the pre-filed legislation by an, out, by an outgoing state senator proposes treating medical cannabis like other prescription drugs. I, I wish they would just decriminalize it. I don't need a track and trace thing. I don't need a store. Black markets matter. Just let us enjoy the plants that we want to enjoy. That's, that's kind of a precursor to our big finale story on this episode, our cover story. But some of the other kind of good news, maybe health-oriented stories that we'll talk about on this first segment before we go textile on our second segment. Researchers find druggable target for treatment of Alzheimer disease. That is fantastic news. And probably another entry of just fantastic band names that we're coming up with all the time. Groundbreaking study shows massive reduction of pesticides in humans after one week of an organic diet. We will include the PDF and the research for that one in the show notes, as we always include everything we say and play down in the show notes. A million and a half volunteers plant 66 million trees in 12 hours, breaking another Guinness World Record. And a huge thanks to our buddy Clint Torres for some of those stories. As you can submit stories using hashtag good news next week, you can just hit me up on the tweets. Of course, you can always reach out james at mediamonarchy.com. Our second segment here gets a little technical and our lead story in the second segment, Illinois Supreme Court rules against six flags in landmark biometric privacy case. Whee! The Illinois Supreme Court has ruled against six flags in an amusement park, if you didn't know. That's why I was doing the roller coaster thing. I've never actually been to Six Flags. Landmark Biometric Information Privacy Act case, BIPA, B-I-P-A, which could result in hundreds of companies paying thousands of dollars in damages for failing to properly notify and obtain consent from people about the collection of their biometrics. The decision, with the PDF in the links, reverses the decision of the appellate court that the violations alleged are merely technical and failure and do not constitute harm, constitute harm under the statute. Early indications were that at least three of the court's seven justices were skeptical of Six Flags' argument, also used in many of the approximately 100 class actions brought under the statute alleging procedural violations and that the plaintiff does not qualify as aggrieved. So can only guess, of course, they were basically taking all kinds of people's pictures. Kind of like America's favorite, well, it's the world's favorite pop star, Taylor Swift, running massive biometric operations at her concerts. Meanwhile, some of the other tech updates that we'll file under not unmitigated good news is generally everything. There's always fine print to read as we implore you to read all these stories. San Francisco could become the first city in America to ban facial recognition surveillance because it keeps misidentifying women and people of color. And if you don't listen to my daily morning show, why on earth aren't you? I make an hour of news, an hour of music every single day. That's 10 hours of non-commercial media a week, not even counting all the other Corbett Report stuff we play, the news, music, memes, and more on the streams. That's 10 hours of content just purely coming from the media monarchy kingdom. I often say on there, and this is, again, I'm always throwing out and really giving away all kinds of great ideas for movie scripts and treatments. What does it say about a world that, of course, discriminates against lots of, pe lots of people? And when they build their, their giant panopticon, what would it be a little bit of justice if maybe those most, you know, 
crucified in our culture actually get to slip out from under the culture because we're so egotistical we didn't think to train the machines to look for other people it's it's really kind of biblical poetic call it what you want federal court in seattle will begin disclosing surveillance records that's a little bit of a victory as is a story we've talked about and made it a cover story on good news next week here before right to repair advocates are now just hosting youtube town halls to show you how to get involved in the right to repair movement so i'm sure the Related will be that Google has uh, squashed all those channels because repairing is, is bad. Ending is better than mending, as the brave new world says. <laughs> Synchronicity. One FBI special agent said the partial government shutdown eliminated any ability to operate. Another guy said the job has never been so hard or thankless. And a third said agents cannot protect and serve the American people. We're playing the tiniest violin in the world. And unfortunately, the double whammy, and again, the constant disappointments of the swamp thing, we don't get a government shutdown, but we also get the national emergency. Pretty much as we told you about 36 hours before it happened on the latest episode of New World Next Week, Government by Emergency. So we get the worst of both worlds in all of those situations. We can generally just sort of hope for gridlock that they don't continue to do things for the American, do things to the American people. Our third and final story here was actually not originally going to be our cover story on this episode 76 of Good News Next Week, but the more I thought about it, the more it's just really the perfect thing. And what an amazing picture. This is maybe the picture you did see in this story a couple of weeks ago. Man arrested after wife found dead following drug-fueled death party. Police arrested a man accused of giving his wife drugs shortly before she died in their Minnesota home. According to the Mankato Free Press, police found 69-year-old Deborah Lynn Johnson in her home after her husband, 58-year-old Dwayne Arden Johnson, called 911. The newspaper reports that Johnson told the police his wife was in a nursing home. She begged him to pull her out so she could die at home. The newspaper reports that Johnson told police his wife was in a nursing home. Doctors confirmed she was indeed at that nursing home. Johnson removed her against the expert medical advice of all the folks who, you know, to insert all the, <laughs> hey boys, take your, uh, you know, HPV shots like we talked about on the good <laughs> New World Next Week episode. Doctors confirmed she was at the center. Johnson removed her against expert medical advice. She previously had two heart attacks, diabetes, and high blood pressure, among other ailments. Dwayne said... They took methamphetamine, she topped, stopped taking her medications, they spent her final hours having sex and listening to Quiet Riot. I do not have mental health. Of course, I would have put that in the background if I had a copy of Metal Health, R.I.P. Kevin DeBrow. After his wife died, he said he wrapped her in a blanket like the Bible told me to. Now, initially, this story might seem gross and crazy and fly in the face of everything the status wants you to believe. Or we could remember what St. Hicks said. You know what I think is cruel? Leaving your loved ones to die in some sterile hospital room surrounded by strangers. Fuck that. Sometimes freedom is scary looking. You should have the freedom and the ability to put in your body whatever you want. Legalize all the drugs, all the stuff. Legalize all of it. These are victimless crimes. And again, these are the things that keep the system rolling. Look at cannabis, look at a big pharma, all, all those things. This is all really wrapped up all in one kind of crazy, kind of goofy, kind of beautifully scary story. Sometimes freedom is scary looking. A couple other related stories to that. I don't know how you can follow up that story, but I'll try. Prominent conversion therapist leaves the movement and comes out as gay, because of course he does. And finally, a reminder, and this actually was going to be our original cover story, our buddy Morgan Lesko has a nice reminder to level up. He wrote just a short little essay about how leading with love and trying to be positive is pretty much the thing that can help us up our game using a video game analogy of leveling up, leveling up. We could all use a little bit of that. We could all use it. There it is, my friends, the 76th episode of Good News next week. Other little bit of good news, I updated the MediaMonarchy.com slash join page. Now it's got all the tiers with some of the latest ways that you can support our work using Subscribestar or Bitbacker. Like James Corbett said, I don't care how you support us, just support us. Please, we need your support. It's never been more difficult in this climate. 
and I've been making Media Monarchy for nearly 14 years. Never heard an ad, never heard a snake oil pitch. We would appreciate your support. Good news next week, episode 76, my friends. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Thanking you so much for listening, inviting you to join us in the Media Monarchy community, and of course, reminding you, as always, like Jell-O-B offer says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.